हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू दिस मूक्स कोर्स लेक्चर वीक वन लेक्चर नंबर टू इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी डिस्कस अबाउट द कन्वेंशनल पेट्रोलियम प्रोडक्शन सिस्टम इन दिस लेक्चर वी आर गोइंग टू ब्रीफली डिस्कस अबाउट पेट्रोलियम रिजर्व्स रिमेनिंग टाइम ऑफ दिस वीक वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अबाउट पेट्रोलियम जियोलॉजी एंड ड्रिलिंग फ्लूड मैथड्स सो दैट्रोलियम रिजर्व आर द डिपोजिशन ऑफ द ऑर्गेनिक and the rock material underneath the surface so the picture that i have shown in the last lecture also is the surface picture where the deposition of similar kind of the strata is shown where the time temperature history underneath the surface convert the organic material to hydrocarbon fluid this happens over the geological time scale where the organic material converts into coal oil and the natural gas the other picture shown here is the representation of how these hydrocarbon fluids are stored under subsurface for deposition of this hydrocarbon fluid source rock reservoir rock and cap rock are required so the setting of geological formation and the types of the rock actually determine the hydrocarbon fluids are stored there or not or what are the composition or the phase of that hydrocarbon fluid underneath the surface at the geological reservoir formation so a petroleum reservoir may be defined as as a subsurface distribution of the pore network formed between strata of sedimentary rock formation which consist of hydrocarbon fluid and the water water is always associated with the hydrocarbon fluid this petroleum reservoir underneath the surface is having the pore connected to each other and the path is permeable so the geological formation is having the porosity and permeability because of that significant amount of the recoverable hydrocarbon fluid are stored at a place where we need to reach by drilling and collect this fluid to the surface so the reservoir are defined by their location temperature and pressure i mean to say the particular type of the reservoir may contain of the hydrocarbons or may not contain even if it contains how much quantity it contains it depends at what location these reservoir are deposited under what temperature pressure conditions these reservoir are exposed in geological terminology it is geological trap configuration structure and stratigraphic features are the important parameters those determine the nature of the reservoir overall petroleum reservoir can be classified into three parts that is the proven reservoir probable reservoir or the possible reservoir proven reservoir are the reservoir which are producing at the economic conditions so those are having the hydrocarbon fluid those are identified the drilling is done production is started and those are producing at a high flow rate and the process is commercially recoverable hydrocarbon fluid that is called the proven reservoir probable reservoir these are the unproved petroleum reservoir which are having the hydrocarbon fluid and those hydrocarbon fluid can be recovered so it is more likely than not to be recoverable those kind of the reservoir are called the probable reservoir and the possible reservoir are the geological site which are having the hydrocarbon fluid but those are not likely to be recoverable with the existing operating methodology some specific technology intervention is required to recover those kind of the reservoir if we discuss this in the broader perspective so the reservoir location is identified drilling is done and the estimation of the hydrocarbon fluid is performed this called the ooip original oil in place so let's see the reservoir is having 100% ooip that's going to classified as reserve that is recoverable or not recoverable by the primary or secondary recovery we can recover the reserve up to 34% and the unrecoverable oil is around 60% so the reserve that is recoverable further can be classified as proved reserve probable reserve or the possible reserve that's we just discussed or more elaborately we can say the proved reserve are the recoverable reserve probable reserve they are less certain than the proved reserve and the possible reserves 
they are probable and more likely not to be recovered. Additional things need to be done. So once it is estimated about the recovery process of these hydrocarbon fluid, the field are developed. So the field can be classified, those are developed field or underdevelopment. And the developed field produces, so the production of the hydrocarbon is classified as produce or non-producing hydrocarbon fluid. The other path could be where for the unrecoverable hydrocarbon, that is actually the target for the EOR or tertiary recovery process where the specific type of the methodology or technique is adopted to recover the unrecoverable hydrocarbon from this reservoir. So what this hydrocarbon fluid is, we called it as petroleum. So the word petroleum is a Greek word, break down into two parts, petra that means rock and the oleum means oil. So the petroleum can be called or petroleum means is rock oil. It is a complex mixture of hydrocarbons with minor amount of the oxygen, nitrogen and sulphur compounds. Hydrocarbon present in the uh, petroleum substance ranges from C1, methane to C40 or even higher up to C70 or even the more complex system where the hydrocarbon are having the carbon number beyond the 70 also. In terms of the elemental composition, this petroleum is predominantly having the carbon supported by the hydrogen, 11 to 14 percent is the hydrogen and the remaining are the other gases or other substance. So the petroleum in general that is the oil means crude oil and the gas that is natural gas are more homogeneous in terms of the composition than in the coal and these petroleums are formed in the sedimentary rocks. So when we talk about the coals, there are a variety of the coals depending on the elemental compositions or the proximate and ultimate analysis. We can classify them as ignite coal, means uh, bituminous coal and some other. So petroleum substance are more homogeneous than the coal. How these petroleum reservoirs are formed? There are various theories there. Broadly, we can classify those theory as the organic and the inorganic theory. Inorganic theory, again, there are many inorganic theory. Two uh, widely published theories are carbide theory and the cosmetic hypothesis. Both these theories are not able to explain the entire formation of these hydrocarbon things. There are certain limitations. So, for example, in the carbide theory, the mineral carbonate reacts with the water and form the hydrocarbon substance like C2, S2 and those go through the uh, further chemical reaction to form the higher molecular compound. But this carbide theory is having the limitation because the amount of the hydrocarbon reserves are found across the globe cannot be explained with this kind of the hypothesis because abundance of the hydrocarbons are formed and these carbide reactions are limited. They require the water to be formed and the metal carbide should be enough to form that amount of the hydrocarbon. Cosmic hypothesis that says hydrogen carbon vapors are already in the cosmic clouds, favorable conditions happen and because of that we got the hydrocarbon. But this is also having the limitation if that kind of the clouds were present, the life cannot be survived on this planet and presence of the heteroatoms like nitrogen, oxygen and sulphur cannot be explained with this theory. The organic theory that is most widely accepted theory where the marine, large marine animals is the main source of the fat that fat got converted into hydrogen. But this hypothesis again cannot explain the presence of the nitrogen. So more comprehensive approach uh, on the organic theory was proposed that is the combined organic theory that says the initial deposition of vegetable and the animal matter was a result of activity of the microorganism that is we call the thermophilic bacteria effect and later on this organic matter that is got deposited underneath the surface gone through the pressure and temperature profile and converted into hydrocarbon fluid. In general the organic matter that is underneath the surface got trapped over the geological time scale gradually converted into coal, oil and the natural gas. Two types of the organic matter are found in the rocks those are land derived and the aquatic life based organic matter. This matter underneath the surface means several thousand feet depth are exposed to heat and pressure that's converted this organic matter to a substance called the humin 
and then this humine got converted into kerosene. The process of converting organic matter to the kerosene is called the diagenesis process. Over the time, as the kerosene is left there underneath the surface, over the time and temperature, this kerosene got converted into petroleum substance. This process is called the catagenesis process. So, what this kerosene is? Kerosene is a sedimentary organic constitute of sedimentary rocks that is insoluble in the usual organic solvents. Kerosene are composed of variety of the organic material that may include algal, pollen, board, bitternite materials. The types of the kerosene, broadly kerosene is classified in three way kerosene type 1, type 2, type 3 based on the elemental analysis. But the types of the kerosene that is present in a particular type of the rocks control the types of the hydrocarbon fluid those are going to be produced by this rock. Overall, over a long time, the influence of the temperature and pressure converted the trapped organic material by biological, biochemical and thermochemical processes to the formation of the hydrocarbons. That hydrocarbon is oil and gas. So, if we classified this hydrocarbon fluid, so the hydrocarbon fluid that produced from this reservoir is having a very complex compound mixture, primarily hydrogen and the carbon in different proportional. Hydrocarbon will exit in a fluid phase or in the solid phase. When it is in the fluid phase, it is gas and liquid. When it is in the solid phase, either it is the carosin, bitumen or the coil or the coal depending upon the organic material is exposed to different time temperature history. Broadly classification of the fluid hydrocarbon could be the liquid hydrocarbon and the natural gas hydrocarbon, there should be gas. The liquid hydrocarbons are further classified as the crude oil, natural gas liquid. Natural gas liquid is further classified as condensate, gasoline and the liquid petroleum gases. Similar way can be uh, we can classify the natural gas as the non-associate gas, associate gas and dissolved solution gas. So, these are the form of the fluid phase that is getting produced from the reservoir naturally. Broadly, these are the crude oil and the natural gas, but further classifications are there. So, when we talk about the liquid hydrocarbon, what this crude oil is? It is a mixture of hydrocarbon that exit in the liquid phase at the reservoir condition as well as when we are bringing this to the surface, the temperature pressure is different at the surface, it still remains in the liquid phase. The substance or the fluid phase is called the crude oil. What is the difference between crude oil and the natural gas liquid? The natural gas liquid is that portion of the reservoir gas that are liquefied at the surface. So, the natural gas liquid NGL is actually in the gaseous phase underneath the surface. When it is brought to the surface, it is passing through the separator surface facilities or processing unit, it changes its phase and convert it into liquid that we call the natural gas liquid. Natural gas liquid include but are not limited to very light hydrocarbon gases like ethane, propane, butane, pentane depending on at what temperature pressure they are exposed, they may get converted into liquid phase including the gasoline and the condensate. Similarly, we can say about the natural gas also. Natural gas is a mixture of hydrocarbon and non-hydrocarbon gases that exist in the gaseous phase or in the solution with the crude oil underneath the surface at the reservoir condition. The subdivision of the natural gas, non-associated gases, this is kind of a gas that is free gas that do not contain any significant quantity of the crude oil. It is in the gaseous phase underneath the surface when it is brought to the surface, it is in the gaseous phase. Associate gas that is also known as a gas cap gas, which actually settle underneath the surface and in the reservoir formation above the oil and it is getting produced along with the oil. So, it is always associated with the oil production. Dissolved gas is the portion of the natural gas that is actually is in the solution phase with the crude oil under the reservoir condition. Another terminology for the gas dealing with the reservoir is the injected gas. This is the gas be injected in the reservoir from the outside to maintain the pressure in the reservoir. 
So, why it is important to discuss this crude oil and the uh, natural gas? As we already know about the importance of the crude oil and the natural gas or the fossil energy, actually uh, the fossil energy is still are very important source of the fuels. They actually control the world economy. If we look the utilization of the hydrocarbon fluid or the reservoir fluid in the sector wise like the transportation, industry, non combusted uh, things and the building, we will see the demand of end users in different sector is keep increasing. So, the data shows here are from 1970 till 2040, so the projected data. These kind of the data you can find in several agencies, those are producing such kind of the data almost every year like the energy outlook, CIA, EIA. The data taken here are from the BP energy outlook, they published in 2019 where it shows like the end user sector for the energy demand is increasing. This is happening because the rapid development is happening, civilization is going through the modern phase and the energy demand is required. The energy demand if we look in the reason wise, we also see the energy demand or overall energy demand is also increasing worldwide and it is expected in 2040 the energy demand will be higher or significantly higher compared to 2019 where this data is taken. In this chart, we also see the country wise or a group of the countries that form the organization of economic cooperation and the development around 38 countries are the part of this. They are in the need of significant amount of the energy. India need is lesser than the China and some other African countries are having the need. but in general, we will see each country's energy demand is increasing as we are progressing towards the development. How to meet this energy need? There are several forms of the energy, those can be utilized to meet this need. They can be classified as renewable, hydro, nuclear, coal, gas and the oil. So, in the third graph, you will see the energy is supplied in different forms like renewable, hydro, nuclear, coal, gas and their distribution is on how much share they are having in the total supply of energy need. The BP energy outlook in 2019 published the data and they said 50% of the demand of the total energy need of the world is still be supplied by the oil and gas until 2040. Despite the oil breakdown happened in 2015, the demand of fossil fuels like oil and gas in the world is still high, world is still depending on the fossil fuel waste energy. When we look some oil reserve scenario worldwide, a global proven oil reserve have been recorded to be around 1734 billion barrels in 2019. I said the data are taken from 2019 published uh, by energy outlook or some other agency. You can find out the updated data every year. Certain agencies publish the data every year about the world global perspective of the energy, different shares by different sector of the energy. Sometimes the data are like uh, not accurate because it depends on how much uh, data they collected, who provided the data, how accurate those data are as well as the, the world is moving with a faster rate. So, the share of different sector of the energy may be changing. Uh, similar to like petroleum reserve, when we are classifying the petroleum reserve in the proven, probable and the possible, the distribution may change because if the new discovery happen, the total oil reserve of a country will also change and that will reflected in this classification of the petroleum reserves. Let us come back to the world's oil fields. So, the global proven reserve is 1734 billion barrels. The global reserves to production, so how much reserve a particular country is having or globally how much total reserve and how much we are producing shows that the oil reserve in 2019 is enough to supply the current production rate for the next 50 years. So, if you keep producing with the current rate, Next 50 years, the reserve is good enough to supply the hydrocarbon fluid. 
if we look regionally, South and Central America have the highest RYP ratio, that is the reserve to production ratio, and they can produce up to 144 years, while the Europe has the lowest and their reserves are estimated to produce up to 12 years with the current rate they are producing. The top countries in terms of the reserves are Venezuela, that is accounting 17.5% of the total global reserve, followed by Saudi Arabia 17.2% and then Canada and then that is around 10% then the rest of the countries comes in terms of the total reserves. The organization called the OPEC, Organization of the Petroleum Export Countries, this is the organization of the intergovernment of 30 nation founded in 1960 in Baghdad by its first member, then they later on increase the numbers of their member. Its headquarter is in Vienna now since 1965. So, these 13 countries actually form a group called the OPEC and the OPEC is having a major influence on the global oil price. The OPEC includes 6 countries from the Middle East, 1 from Southeast Asia, 4 in Africa and 2 from South America and some of the countries are the permanent members, some are on the rotation. As per OPEC annual report published in 2019, around 80 percent of the total proven oil reserve is located in OPEC member countries. So, they actually the controlling the price, they actually controlling the production and the business of oil related or they, they actually uh, controlling the oil related business. If we look on the proven crude oil reserve for different countries, so I summarize the data for the 3 years 1990, after 20 years 2009 and then another 10 years that is 2019. You will see more or less the data are showing the constant distribution slightly changes there. For example, in the Middle East in 1990 it was 53.75 percent of the total proven reserve was in the uh, Middle East that is come down to 49.25 in 2019 and 2019 it was 48.15 percent. More or less if you see the, the data are almost constant, slight variation is depending on how new discoveries are happening at what rate uh, they are producing, how much reserve remains with them. In this list of the global perspective published by again BP Energy Outlook in 2010, we will see the Venezuela that is having the highest reserve, followed by the Saudi Arabia 298 barrel, billion, 298 billion barrels, followed by Canada, Iran, Iraq, Russia, Kuwait, UAE, United States and the Libya. In this list, if you see India is somewhere here, which is having the very less amount of the reserve compared to the world total reserve. But in this picture, the Venezuela is actually leading in terms of the proven reserves in billion barrel. But despite having the biggest proven world oil reserves in the world, the country Venezuela is falling at 14th position in terms of the world oil production as per the OPEC data 2017. So, it is not just you are having the oil reserve, how effectively you are able to produce that oil reserve is also important. Apart from political and regulation reasons, a big reason is that the oil is very difficult to extract. So, the oil reserves are there, but the composition or the quality of the oil reserve depends on the geological setting and the uh, other parameter. Sometimes the oil is there, but it is very heavy or it is very viscous it is not easy to recover. Uh, that is one of the case with the Venezuela. If we see the production and the consumption worldwide, there is a constant increase in the world need of the fossil energy or the crude oil. This picture shows for the crude oil. From 2000 to 2018, you see the production is also increasing to beat the consumption rate. It increases from 77 to 98 billion barrel per day from 2000 to 2018. If we look the Indian scenario, the production and 
कंजप्शन और गेटिंग अपार्ट एज वी आर मूविंग फर्दर फ्रॉम टू थाउजेंड टू टू थाउजेंड सिक्सटीन सो दी प्रोडक्शन इज नॉट हैपनिंग एट द रेट एट विच द कंजप्शन इज हैपनिंग इन इंडिया फॉर द क्रूड ऑयल इट मीन्स इंडिया इज हैवली डिपेंडेंट ऑन द इम्पोर्ट इफ वी लुक रीजन वाइज वेर दिस क्रूड ऑयल इन इंडिया दैट इज गेटिंग प्रोड्यूस लोकली इन इंडिया वी आर हैविंग दी फिफ्टी टू पॉइंट टू नाइन एंड अराउंड ट्वेंटी एट परसेंट ऑफ द ऑयल रिजर्व आर मोस्टली इन द ईस्टर्न ऑफ सोर एंड द आसाम रीजन एंड द अदर रीजन आर हैविंग द डिस्ट्रीब्यूटेड लाइक आंध्र प्रदेश गुजरात तमिलनाडु दे आर ऑल्सो हैविंग सम शेयर बट मेजोरिटी ऑफ दैम आर इन द ईस्टर्न ऑफ सोर एंड द आसाम रीजन थ्रू विच द प्रोडक्शन इज हैपनिंग इन इंडिया इन टर्म्स ऑफ द डिफरेंट क्लासिफिकेशन ऑफ द रिजर्व आयर द प्रूवन रिजर्व आयर इन इंडिया दोज आर प्रोड्यूसिंग कमर्शली आर इन कॉम्बे बॉम्बे राजस्थान आसाम आसाम आर्क एंड फोल्ड बेल्ट देर आर पोटेंशियल रिजर्व आयर ऑल्सो इन इंडिया एंड देर आर सेवरल साइट्स दो सेव बीन आइडेंटिफाइड एंड दे आर हैविंग द प्रोबेबल रिजर्व लाइक द कच गंगा बेसिन and uh, kerala konkan basin and some other bengal basin so india is also having the possibility to increase its uh, proven reserve in the future if this probable reserve could be converted into proven reserve some more data on oil consumption production and import in india so the oil consumption in india is uh, 44 or 4.4 million barrel per day india rank third in the world in terms of the consumption and that's account 4.6% of the world's total consumption india consumes 0.14 gallon of oil per capita per day that is approximately 51 gallons per capita per year and these data are from year 2016 so the current value might be different so when it comes to the oil production in india india is ranked 20th in the world in terms of the oil producing country india produces every year an amount equivalent to 7.8% of its total proven reserves so to meet the need india heavily dependent on the imports and 96% of the oil consumption india is having is imported from the other countries by the end of 2019 india has reported a total proven crude oil reserve of 4.7 billion barrels some more data on indian wells they are as deep as 12000 feet and can yield as small as 200 barrel per day to 3000 barrel per day indian crude oil is having the api value in the range of 45 to 70 two major player in india ongc and oil they are in the exploration and production to produce the oil identify the new site and finding out the potential reserves on the private side we are having the reliance can sell heliburton slumberze and many more players those are actively looking different sites to find out the hydrocarbon reserves with that india's proven reserve or the potential reserve may increase when it comes to the market value of the crude oil crude oil are categorized in different form one of the way the crude oil price is control in the international market is quality of the crude oil that is uh, the amount of the sulfur in the crude oil as well as what is the api gravity of this crude oil these are the two important parameters sulfur content that's if sulfur content is more it is uh, sour type of the crude oil when the sulfur is taken out it is sweet or when the sulfur content is less the oil is sweet oil in terms of the api gravity it ranges from heavy to light oil so the oil price depends on sulfur content and the api gravity if the api gravity is light or the value is high then we are having the better quality of the oil similarly for the sulfur content if sulfur content is less the crude oil is having the better value in the market like two types of the crude oil light luciana sweet or west texas intermediate they fall in that category where the sulfur content is less and api gravity is reasonably 
towards the lighter side. So, they are having the better market value. So, when it comes to the composition of the crude oil, crude oil is a black oil in color with following majorly in eight groups of the hydrocarbon that we can classify as paraffinic, cyclopentane, cyclohexane, cycloheptane, dicycloparaffinic, benzene, aromatic cycloparaffinic and dinuclear and polynuclear aromatic compound. Overall broadly we can say crude oil is having the hydrogen, carbon along with some metals, some uh, heteroatoms into it and some inorganic compounds like uh, some ions into it. A smaller amount of the organic compound like sulfur, oxygen and nitrogen are always present in terms of the heteroatoms in the crude oil. More smaller amount of the compound like the metals are also associated or the organic metal compound are also associated with the crude oil composition. So, this crude oil is complex, physical and chemical properties varies depending on the geological formation we are extracting this crude oil. Broadly we can classify in three parts like open chain or aliphatic compounds, those are normal paraffin series CN, H2N plus 2 or isoparaffinic series. Second is ring or cyclic compound, those are naphthalic or the aromatic compound, those are the closed cyclic compound either in the naphthalic form or in the aromatic form or the asphaltin or the asphalts, those are asphaltin or the resins, they are the heavy compounds in the crude oil. For example, the resin, it is highly adhesive, brown in color and lower molecular weight with respect to then asphaltin they are present. So, if we do the SARA analysis of the crude oil, we can classify the crude oil into aromatic, saturated aromatic asphaltin and resins. Asphaltin resin are the heavy or higher molecular compounds. So, the paraffinic based compound predominantly are the open chain compound, give low grade gasoline and the baxili oil. Naphthalene compound, they are the cyclic compound. Predominantly asphaltene is also present and Indian crude oils are having this kind of the composition. Intermediate base, large quantity of both paraffinic and naphthalene compounds, they give the bags and the asphalt oil when we are processing this crude oil. So, the crude oil composition can vary, they could be in the cyclic form, isoparaffinic, paraffinic, aromatic compound and can vary that I mentioned like they can vary to a very low carbon number C1 to very high carbon number up to C70 and something. Crude oil what we use like the gasoline or the diesel, gasoline means the petrol and the diesel uh, looks very light and transparent in color and all those things but in actual the crude oil is very thicky and uh, black and brown in the color. Some of the images I am showing you here how crude oil looks like. This crude oil goes through, uh, this crude oil go to the refinery and get refined and different fraction of the crude oil, different fraction of the petroleum substance are produced in the refinery. The second substance of the hydrocarbon fluid is natural gas. Natural gas is a complex mixture of hydrocarbon with minor amount of the non-hydrocarbon compounds. So, predominantly it is from C1 to C6 or C7. In the non-hydrocarbon gases, it is carbon dioxide, hydrogen sulfide and the nitrogen. The gas or natural gas is colorless, odorless, it is combustible in nature, it produces energy when it is combusted and it is considered as a clean fuel as it is not going to produce uh, some harmful uh, gases like the uh, SO2 and uh, SOx and NOx. The energy content of the natural gas is measured in BTU. The value varies from 500 to 1550 BTU depending on the composition. So, if the hydrocarbon composition or the higher carbon number hydrocarbon composition are more, the heating value of the natural gas is more. The non-hydrocarbon gases reduces the, high, the energy content of the natural gas. Other than the crude oil and the natural gas, most of the reservoir also produce the reservoir water that is also called the formation water or the produce water. The composition of oil reserve water depends again the reservoir formation, but oil reservoir water also known as conid water almost invariably contain dissolved salt. Conid water has more salt than the seawater. The analysis 
of water that collected from the oil field source it is having several type of the cationic and anionic substance the value for one of the sample collected from oil field are compared here so different composition ions and their comparison is done with the sea water so we can see even the some of them like calcium ion sodium ion magnesium they are more than the sea water so overall formation water is more salty than the sea water so to reach this reservoir fluid the exploration techniques are required the picture is shown here it says like from the production well we are producing the hydrocarbon fluid along with the water but how this fluid is getting produced we need to find the location where the well should be drilled it means we need to do some survey to find out the exact location not only the location but how deeper that well should be drilled to get the hydrocarbon fluid out of the reservoir domain for that purpose exploration techniques are developed by the geologist and geophysicist over the time and if we look in the history until the late 1970s successful drilling was a hit and miss operation so the geologists and geophysicists used to suggest there is a potential site where the hydrocarbon reserve hydrocarbon reserves may be found uh, the success was not that high even the rate of 10% success it means one good well and nine dry wells was considered to be attractive during that time but as the advancement is happens lot of geological surveys are done seismic surveys are done not only in 2d and 3d now 4d seismic surveys are done the underneath surface is also mapped properly to find out the locations and the uh, deeper position to recover this hydrocarbon so these are done with uh, several surveys several techniques like magnetometer logging the data and now advanced computing techniques are there where we can model the underneath the subsurface phenomena easily with uh, as much as required or accurate information perform the simulation to identify the position where the drilling should be done so the geophysical surveys include seismic survey gravity survey magnetic survey these kind of the survey actually record the physical properties of the subsurface formation this measurement translate the geological data uh, such as structure stratigraphy depth positions into useful information those are correlated to establish the relationship are those sites or the locations are having the reserve or not if they are having the potential reserves uh, it is going to be the oil or gas or the mixture the physical properties of rock are also documented to identify the potential traps in the reservoir and overall basin geometry configuration so this kind of the survey are not only useful for the petroleum reservoir or is producing the hydrocarbon fluid out of the reservoir but for several other purposes also those are used by the geologists and geophysicist one of the technique that is widely used for identifying the location is seismic survey it involves the natural or artificial generation and propagation of the seismic waves down into the earth until they encounter a discontinuity and are reflected back to the surface so the seismic survey is similar to the ultrasound we go to the doctor and get the ultrasound done to scan out what is the structure in our body part for example we are going to get the scan of the stomach how the kidney is functioning is there any fatty liver or something or not this is done in the similar manner in the seismic survey in the uh, field where the electronic detector called the geophones are used to collect the waves those are reflecting back from the underneath the surface so the sound waves are generated with the help of some thumper vibrations are created those waves are propagating underneath the surface they are striking to different formations based on the formation they are reflecting back to the surface and the time taken or the velocity of the sound wave is recorded and that is correlated the types of the formation is present there so the seismic wave travels to non but varying velocity depending upon the kinds of the rock they are going to strike the speed of sound waves through the earth crust varies it varies directly with the density and inversely with the porosity 
the seismic wave travels with the speed of minimum like 1000 feet per second and maximum 20,000 feet per second that is approximately 6 km per second. Typical average velocity in different rock if it is shell it is 3.6, sandstone is 4.2, limestone is 5.0 and similar for the other are recorded they are in the database where the different geological formation can be correlated with the help of seismic survey. So, in the summary of today's lecture, we discuss about the origin and the composition of the hydrocarbon fluid like crude oil and the natural gas, briefly discuss about the water, energy scenario, the demand and supply across the globe, the proven reserve in the world and in India, exploration technique, we briefly discuss about the seismic survey only. More detail can be uh, found in the literature about like uh, how the uh, logging of the well is done when it is getting drilled and how that information is transferred to the useful information. In next lecture, we will discuss briefly about the petroleum geology of a reservoir. With this, I would like to thank you, all of you. Uh, see you in the next lecture. Thank you very much. Thank you.